Hi, everybody. What we're going to be working on today is the opposite of differentiation, which is called anti-differentiation. So anti-differentiation will go backwards. So just how this, the square root and squaring something are inverses of each other, like one undoes the other, differentiating and anti-differentiation undo each other. So let's take a look. And first, we're going to talk about just taking the derivative of something. Now, if you look at these, if we took the derivative of the first function, we would get 2x. And if we took the derivative of the second function, guess what? We would also get 2x. And if we took the derivative of this third function, we would get 2x. So it brings us to an important matter, which is when we undo this, taking of the derivative, right? When we do the antiderivative, we somehow have, have to account for the fact that there could be something added or subtracted to the antiderivative. So the way that we do that is we put plus C when we do the antiderivative. And I'm going to get into that right now, but that's going to be to account for that we could have had something added or subtracted from what our derivative you know, what, what our derivative is. So let's do some examples. Whoops. I'm going to show you how we do this. So a couple things. We've got four little, little rules here, and then we're going to have lots of practice. So first four rules we're, we're dealing with. The first one is the constant rule. So with the constant rule, that basically says if you have the derivative of a function that's just a constant, that must mean that the function was that constant times x. And then, of course, plus c. So let's take a look at this. I want you to notice we have a new symbol that we're introducing that's called an integral. So when we take the antiderivative of 5, if we think about it, that must have been 5x in the original function. And then, of course, when we took the derivative, that x exponent of x went to 0, right? So 5x plus a constant. Okay, so if we had had, you know, take the derivative of 20, the result would be 20x plus a constant. Okay, so that's our first rule. And again, we're going to have tons of practice. Our second rule is the power rule. Now, we know when we take a derivative, and I'm going to do an example down here, like we take the derivative of x to the fifth. The way we do that is we bring our exponent down, so we multiply, and then we subtract 1 from our exponent up here, which would result in 5x to the fourth. Well, what we have to do is we have to undo the subtracting of 1, and we would have to undo the multiplying of 5. So if we were going backwards, if I was telling you to take the antiderivative of 5x to the 4th, what we would do is we would say, okay, add 1 to this, which would give us x to the 5th, and then divide by that exponent, which is 5, and of course, simplifying, we would get x to the fifth. But don't forget, we always have to put plus c for the possibility that there was a constant in the original function. And maybe that constant is zero, but we have to put that. So let's look at this. And here's our rule, okay, which just shows that we're adding 1 to what this exponent is, and then we're dividing by that value or multiplying by 1 over that value is the same thing. So the antiderivative of x cubed. We're going to add 1 to the 3, so we get x to the 4th, but then we're going to divide by that 4 plus a constant. So that right there is our power rule. We're going to use that a lot. All right, the natural log rule. It's very simple. You just have to recognize it. When we have the antiderivative of 1 over x, it's simply the absolute, the natural log of the absolute value of x. I forgot my absolute value symbols there. Plus a constant. 
So if you look at my example, this one's a little bit in disguise and I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit to something we're going to do. I'm going to move this four out in front of the integral. Four times one over X dx. Now let's take the derivative of, or the antiderivative, sorry, of one over X. We will get the natural log of the absolute value of X. And then we just put that four right in front of it. Okay. So by pulling that four out, it's like we could focus a little better on that. And then of course, plus C. And again, that one is just more about recognizing it. You'll have that memorized in no time. All right, the fourth rule is when we have a base of e, and you'll notice that our exponent has a uh, coefficient, so it could be like e to the 2x or 3x or 4x or 5x. Think about if we were taking the derivative of e to the 5x, we would have to use chain rule. So our rule here understands that. So we keep our e to the ax, but we multiply it by 1 over the coefficient of the exponent right there. And of course, plus C. So for this one, we will get e to the three X times one third. I just put it over three. It means the same thing plus a constant. So those are our first four rules. You're going to go ahead and practice them. So you can pause this video and try to do them or you can keep the video going and I'm going to work through them. So if you're going to pause the video, pause it now. If you're going to stick with me, I'm just going to work through these one at a time. So the first one, what I see is we have a constant. So I know that derivative or the antiderivative will be eight X to the first, right? Plus a constant. And that's it. For the second one, I have three X squared. So the antiderivative, I have to add one to the exponent. So that would give us three X cubed. And then I have to divide by three plus a constant. Now, you know, I want that reduced. So final answer, X cubed plus C. Okay, example number three, it's just e to the x. Well, if you think about on our special sheet where we have all our derivatives, e, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and so is the antiderivative. Plus c, don't forget it. Number four, do you recognize it? I don't want you to think of this as x to the negative one. We don't want to do that. We just know that it's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of X plus C. That was our fourth rule, third rule. Yeah, that was our third rule. Example five is our fourth rule and we're undoing chain rule. So remember we keep E to the two X as it is, but then divide by two. And of course we add C. Okay. Six and seven are pretty easy. It's just X to the seventh. So we're just going to add one, which gives us X to the eighth and divide by eight plus C. Number seven, same thing. We're going to add one. So we get X to the 100, but then divide that term by 100 and add C. For number eight, just like we've done when we were taking the derivative, when we take the antiderivative, we're going to want to rewrite this. And we're going to want to rewrite it as X to the one half. Okay. So same routine. We're going to add one. So we will get X to the three over two. And now the rule says to divide by the coefficient, but when we have, a, I'm sorry, to divide by the exponent, but when our exponent is a fraction, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So I jump right to that and then add C. There's no reason to divide by the fraction and rewrite it. Okay. I would do a rewrite on this one as well. 
x to the negative fourth. So when you add one, oh, I'm sorry, x to the negative third. Sorry about that. So when you, whoops, let's get that straight. So x to the negative third. So when we add one to that, we get x to the negative second. And then we divide by negative two plus c. The only thing I would do to rewrite that is I would put that negative out in front. And you may choose to bring that x to the negative two down and make it look like this. And number 10 is almost the same as number 9. We would do a rewrite to make it x to the 1 -third. I'm running out of space here. Then we're going to add 1. So we will get x to the 4 thirds. Multiply by the reciprocal. And add a constant. So hopefully we did okay with those. Okay, those are the four most basic rules for antiderivatives. Now we're going to have two other um, little properties that will help you, especially when things get a little more complicated, which they're about to, about to get a little more complicated. So this didn't copy well, but that should be a multiply. So when we have a function and it's being multiplied by a constant, we can pull that constant out in front of the integral. So it just makes it a little bit easier. We can just focus on the function that we're working with. So an example of this, we actually did it on the previous page with, with the natural log, is if we had something like, take the antiderivative of, um, I don't really need that parenthesis, of uh, 3x to the fifth. Okay, what we can do is we can rewrite that so we can just focus on that x to the fifth. It just pulls that three out and we can deal with it in a moment. So when we take the antiderivative of x to the fifth, we get x to the sixth and then we divide by six. And now you can drop that three in front. And of course, plus c. And as always, I said it before, you're going to reduce whenever you can. So we would get x to the 6th over 2 plus c. Okay, so not too bad. That coefficient can be pulled out in front. just makes life a little easier. Our second property deals with a sum or difference. And what it basically tells us is if we have terms that are being added or subtracted, we can take the antiderivative of each one separately. So for example, if I told you to take the antiderivative of 3x squared plus 4x plus 1, we can take each one. And now I'm going to combine these two rules because we're going to take the antiderivative of this term and this term and this term separately. So we could do a little rewrite of 3 antiderivative of x squared plus 4 antiderivative of x, oops, I forgot my dx, plus the antiderivative of 1. And that way we're looking at each one separately. So the first one, we get x cubed divided by 3. And now we're going to put that 3 right in front. For the second one, we're going to get x squared. We're going to add one there. So we get x squared divided by 2. And then we're going to put that 4 out in front. 1 is just going to become 1x. And of course, plus a constant. And now you're going to go ahead and reduce this. So we get from the first one x cubed. From the second one, we get 2x squared. From the third term, we get x and we add our c. So that's a little helpful little property for us. Okay, so what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to try these four problems. Okay, what I would tell you though for this one, I would, whoops, I would go I don't know if I'm still recording, but I'm coming back. 
I don't know where it is. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. I hit something on my screen and I don't know what happened. Um, what I was saying is on number 12, what I would do is I would do a little rewrite where I divide X into each term. So, and separate them out. So first thing I would do is a rewrite that looks like this parentheses 4x squared divide here plus 5x minus 1 over x don't change that one that's going to be our natural log okay and then you can pull that 4 out 4 antiderivative of x squared plus 5 antiderivative of x oh I keep forgetting to put my dx's here sorry minus the antiderivative of 1 over x Okay, so that's what I would suggest for number 12 and number 14 as well. So go ahead and try these problems and then check back and see if you get the same answers as me. You got this. Okay, so hopefully you did okay on these. Check your answers. Take a look right here. I hope you recognize that. Okay, have a great day, everybody.